All right, so yeah, today then, um, as Craig mentioned, I'm going to talk about um, Tomb Raiding SEO. So you may or may not have heard us talking about this already if you've followed any of the niche website builder stuff, but quick presentation to kind of take you through um, so that you can kind of get a feel for like what the hell I'm talking about. Um, and then we can kind of take any questions on that. So, so what is Tomb Raiding SEO? So in short, it's just a clearly defined process for, for keyword research. And we gave a name to it. Um, it's nothing, we're not claiming to have, have invented something that didn't exist before. Um, it's a combination of competitor research and correlation SEO um, to identify you know, keyword opportunities, essentially, among your competitors. So um, we, we gave it a name um, because it's just easier than kind of trying to explain the whole process. The reason we did it is because you you know we wanted some consistency in the results that we give for our customers. We run a digital marketing agency. We're doing keyword research all the time. Um, you ask five different SEOs to do keyword research, they're going to come up. They're all going to do something completely different, right? So we wanted to have a, a consistent way, this, and this is just one of the ways that we do to reliably kind of get two persons could do the same piece of keyword piece of work and pretty much come up with the same results. And so we wanted to come up with a nice, reliable process that we know that if you do it this way, then you're going to get some sort of consistency in the results. So what it's not is some, as I said, some magic new left field technique you never saw coming. Um, but we just use a combination of techniques clearly defined into a repeatable process. And it is not the only keyword research method you're ever going to need. That's not what we're claiming here. <clears throat> so... One of the prerequisites for being able to use this keyword research technique is you're going to need your site's going to need some authority, um, because what the the whole point of this technique is that you're looking at your weak, weaker competitors to work out um, where the opportunities lie. Well, if you've got no authority and you've just started your site today, you are the weakest competitor. There is nobody below you um, to kind of to what we call raid. Uh, in in, the, in this context, um, their, their articles and their best keywords. So, um, so step by step. So here's the here's the steps that we go through. So uh, we'll find a big list of competitors, and we we'll talk about how we kind of go about doing that. We calculate where we sit in the competitor landscape. So are the sites are these competitors uh, a stronger site than us, a higher more high, a higher authority site than us, or are they weaker than us? Um, and we then go ahead and look at these weaker competitors and uh, rate them for their best performing articles. And we, then we correlate the content against that week, these, these weakest competitors. And we'll come into like why that, why we do that and how we do that as well in the bit. And we sort by the traffic levels of the articles and start writing. So we've identified good opportunities. Then we're just going for the, the, the articles with the, with the most opportunity, the most traffic. So finding a big list of competitors, this is, you know, there's a few steps in this which are type, quite time consuming, but they're worth spending the time on. One of them is at the beginning, you just need to find a huge list of competitors. And the, the more time you spend on this, the better the results you're going to get. The, the bigger list, the more uh, keywords, the more articles that you're going to be able to find to raid um, and just have more opportunities. So we don't, we don't uh, skimp on this. We kind of look for as many uh, as many competitors as we can. Um, one of the ways that we do this, or as a few ways that we do this, we do we use uh, SEMrush, Ahrefs, and Google to do this. So in um, SEMrush, you can go to, you can look at your organic competitors page, and you can find all the people that are competitors to, to your site. Um, you can also do a, a very similar um, report in Ahrefs as well. And then the other way is that we Google it. So we'll Google some keywords that we that we want to be ranking for, um, it, we're ranking our site for, and then we'll just pull them out of the SERPs, some of these competitors, um, because Ahrefs and SEMrush won't necessarily pick up all of those competitors because generally they're trying to, when they're when they're finding um, organic competitors for you, they're trying try generally trying to find sites that are very much like you in terms of size as well. So. Now, are you, you know, they've got similar traffic levels. So what you what you really want to do is, is get all the all of the competitors that might be have lower less traffic than you, more traffic than you, and maybe not 
in the eyes of SEMrush or Ahrefs, direct competitors, but just other people within your niche. So Googling, uh, Googling some keywords at that point as well also helps um, build out that list a little bit more. And <clears throat> it's, it's kind of rinse and repeat as well, because once you've found a competitor, once you've found a good competitor in your list, maybe it's one of these, you can then go and put them into SEMrush or Ahrefs and then find out their competitors and then find a competitor there and then find their competitors. And it's kind of endless. You can just keep going on and on, finding your competitors of competitors. So, um, <clears throat> so once you've reviewed, uh, once you've, uh, once you have your list, uh, check that these sites, check the sites are true competitors. So although Ahrefs or SEMrush says these sites are competitors, they might not be niche sites or content sites in the same way that you, that you, you've created them. They might be slightly different. They might not be targeting the same stuff. They might just not be a content site. They might end up being an e-commerce site or something like that that you're just not interested in. So you can kind of eliminate them out. So just make, don't, just don't take what you see in the tools as gospel. Um, go ahead and kind of clean that list to make sure, yeah, these, these are genuinely um, competitive sites to, to the one that I'm working on. Um, and I already mentioned, yeah, you can go down a rabbit hole finding unlimited competitors and competitors and competitors and stuff. So how do you find out where you sit in the competitor landscape? So this one's quite a tricky one. Um, but what we what we do is we will take six industry metri metrics from Moz, Ahrefs, and Majestic. So it's domain rating, UR rating, domain authority, page authority, trust flow, and citation flow. And essentially, we'll take all of those numbers and add them together. And what that gives us is that if you just take one metric, you know, it could be, you know, none, none of these, none, none of these metrics are approved or authorized by Google. They're all kind of third party metrics. So by take, taking multiple metrics, we're hoping to just kind of smooth out of any error in kind of any one tool um, and, and kind of just get a little bit more of an accurate picture. So as I say, we simply add up all of those, those numbers and that gives us a number. Um, da -da, I think I've already said that. Keep going ahead of myself. Um, yep. So what what ends up looking like is something like this. So you have a, a the the yellow bar here is what will be your site. I've hidden the URLs because this is like a genuine piece of work that we've done. Um, but the yellow what bar is kind of our site. So what we've you know, we've added up the totals there. So the, the sites above, we're assuming okay, they're a higher authority than us. And the sites below in that list are a lower authority um, than us. And there's the one, those are the ones that we're targeting. So what we do, once we've built that table, we'll take a look at those sites that are below us in the list. We use tools like Ahrefs and SEMrush to identify which articles are ranking and which articles are getting traffic for with a pretty reasonable assumption that if you're able to, if they're able to rank for those keywords and rank those articles, given what we've established as being us being a higher authority, then we should be able to rank for them too. Um, okay, so once we've identified our list of articles, we need to get them get them written. Our competitors already have uh, already given us a winning formula for how to structure our articles and the topics to include, so we want to follow suit. So what we're saying there is that you know, you can use tools like Surfer and things like that to correlate against like a top 10, uh, you know, articles or top 10 sites are in the SERPs or top four, whatever, however you kind of pull them out. Um, but what we're saying is that, well, this site is already achieving results for the structure, the way that they've structured their article. And what you'll sometimes find when you're, when you're doing this kind of research is you'll find like real outliers where they're actually quite a low authority but they're managing to rank for a whole bunch of keywords, and generally, what that what that means is if they're not if they're not um, ranking because of their backlink profile, because of their authority, they're probably ranking because of their on page efforts, and they've done a really good job with uh, putting the articles together. So what we do is we aim to correlate any article that we create against the the weaker competitor that we found on their article, and that totally doesn't mean that we're going to look into plagiarize the competitor in any way. We, you definitely don't want to do that. We've had definitely um, had people that have had experience of um, the DMCA and problems that that brings. Um, you'll kind of have your um, 
any kind of ad monetization kind of removed from those pages at that point. They're pretty brutal and they're pretty strict on hosting companies and pretty strict on the ad networks. So that those they, they just don't take any risks. Like it's, not, it's not in their interest to take any risks because they can get hit by quite a hard hammer from DMCA. So they'll, they'll just um, give you, well, in terms of hosting, they'll kind of give you a certain period of time to fix it. In terms of ads, generally they just stop showing ads on that page until you fix it. And it's pretty kind of uh, brutal. So you don't, you don't want to go down that route. You just want, and you don't want to have, you know, carbon copies of articles anyway, that you, where you run the risk of um, duplicate content and things like that. So what we're saying is take a look at, take a look at the, the topics that's covered in that, those articles and make sure you cover those topics at least as well as that article's covering it, if not better. Um, and you can take a look at the, some of the headings. Again, you don't want to copy the headings word for word, but you kind of want to think about how it's, making sure that those those topics that are covered in those headings and those headings are kind of targeting the same um, uh, same uh, same intent um, then that's kind of how how we kind of look at it so I think I just probably just said that be sure to change the wording of the subheadings and the title of the article to make sure it's the same topics are covered uh, rewrite the article from scratch but do your best to cover the topics yeah uh, correlate the number of subheadings, images, a bit similar to how like Surfer does its thing as well. It kind of gives you an average of number of headings, number of images, word counts and stuff like that. Um, we generally aim for a 10% extra in word count. That gives us the opportunity to um, write additional copy in the article. So hopefully we're covering the topics in greater detail, but also adding in things like FAQs we find has like a really positive um impact uh, on articles it's a way of adding new content but it's just a way of, another way of google to be able to present you in the serps as well um and just not forgetting to add faq schema to your page as well because that'll help um you turn it, you you know your help, help your site turn up in the uh, the you know the question the frequently asked questions boxes in within google and stuff so um yeah, so we do, we do, we do only aim for a bit more content, not just because we're trying to beat the number of words, we're just trying to cover the topics in, in more detail. <clears throat> and last but not least, once we've got our big list of articles um, from the, the uh, sites that we've tomb raided, then we will just start with the ones that are that have got the most traffic coming to them and start writing those first because they're the ones that are probably going to have the, more, the, the better results and the bigger impact. So this is an example of one of my sites. It's a bit off date now, um, but I've kind of moved this site on uh, since. But it's from March. This is up to this is a case study up to March last year. So this is a site that I did exclusively tomb raiding uh, SEO, uh, tomb raiding approach in terms of keyword research. Um, so it was on an age domain, which meant I had some authority already. So I spent two and a half thousand on that. Um, uh, did uh, create some content. I can't remember how many thousands of words that was now, um, but yeah, you can probably work it out by calculating it on our site, about seven cents a word. And then um, site purchase. I also purchased a site um, that was had no authority at all, actually, zero authority, but it had about 25 articles that were getting 7,000 words, and it was the exact same niche that I had, which gave me more confidence in that niche because I had, that site had no authority, 25 articles, and was getting 7,000 sessions a month. So I bought it for the traffic, basically, Um and just uh, mapped the articles one to one to my to my new site and uh, uploaded them there. Um, so I just did a three one redirect essentially of that. But <clears throat> so did that. Um, the exact earnings. This was after thirteen months. You can just check. Yeah. So after thirteen months, um, the exact earnings to date had got to uh, twenty eight thousand. And by the end of the thirteenth month. Uh, the site was earning nearly five thousand dollars, so to value that at forty x um, would be about uh, one hundred ninety three thousand. So take the revenue earned today plus um, that minus the spend was a five hundred and seven return on investment. Of course, I didn't have that site for very long. Um, if if I'd kept it for longer and kept adding another five thousand dollars every month and not really adding many more articles, i.e., the cost not really going up, but the earnings continued to maintain. Obviously, that return on investment continues to go up even higher. Like over time um but yeah that's just one one example from my own portfolio of a site that i just purely did the tomb reading seo technique on, on. 
and they work great for age. They work great for age domains because, um, you know, they're, they're, they're the sites. The, the domains already got some authority. Um, you already got something to work with. You can find weaker competitors, and yeah, we do that time and time again. For that's one of our primary techniques for the age domains that we uh, work with for our customers as well. That's it, Craig. Thank you.